Hello and welcome to the first uh, lecture for Cultural Perspectives Online. And I'm Dr. Evie Smith, and I'm sure you've already watched my introductory video. Um, but I am your teacher and subject lead for this unit, uh, this term at the college. Um, and I am on location, as you can see, this is not my office. I am in Las Vegas. And if you look out the window, I've got a wonderful view, enjoying American culture, American subculture, and all the fabulous lights. So we're going to be talking about some of these uh, ideas uh, this week about subcultures and the ways in which we experience uh, ourselves in the world and come across these different cultures um, day to day. So let's have a look at what this unit's all about uh, and what we're planning to do for this term. So uh, this lecture is really just a welcome and introduction. I'll give you some information about the unit um, and I'll particularly focus on the assessments because I know students will go to that page of the unit uh, learning guide uh, first. So we can talk more about that in the tutorials, but for now I'll just give you a brief rundown. I'll also say to you um, a few things about culture, uh, different ways we can define it um, and the ways we can make sense of it. I'll also uh, touch on why it's important that we study culture and uh, why it's really important that we rem remain vigilant um, and think about uh, some of the negatives about uh, dominant cultures and how they produce inequalities and discrimination in our world. And I'll also talk about uh, week one and what you need to prepare uh, for our first Zoom session. So here we go. Um, so this is a brand new unit online and I have taught this unit last term, but I'm really excited that this is uh, the first time we're running this in an online uh, manifestation. So I'm excited to use a new technology, which is probably going to be challenging for me. And I'm brought to you today through uh, the fabulous advancements that have been made in digital cultures. Um, and we're gonna be thinking about how we can bring culture to life through visual uh, uh, images, videos, and kind of really engaging and making it as interactive as possible because our face-to-face uh, -face class is only once a week, um, but I will have these little lecture pods that I hope that you can view before coming to class. Um, and also that you can, uh, a couple of, activities or questions to think about in preparation for the unit uh, and in each week. So um, I am a sociologist and my field of research is in gender and sexualities and so I have a lot of experience in uh, sort of examining uh, minority cultures and in particular uh, my experiences are in gay and lesbian communities and transgender uh, lived experience of transgendered people. So um, I hope that I can shed some light on that in our week on gender. And I've also worked as a research assistant um, on a project about homeless youth. And one of our topics in this unit is about poverty. And so we're really gonna look at the different ways in which uh, poverty or homelessness is made sense of and it's uh, around the world and how it's relative to one's uh, position in society, uh, where they live, uh, sort of, you know, um, who they come across, and that it's not the same in every place. So I hope that my experiences as a sociologist and a researcher can help uh, prepare you to think critically about your own culture and what we're doing here. So what you need is access to the view site, the library website, um, download the materials, engage with the discussion boards. We're going to be having some, you know, dynamic uh, and robust kind of, um, I guess, group discussions about each of the topics. And I hope that you can contribute each week. So I do expect students to come prepared, um, having listened to this lecture pod, um, having thought about the weekly question and done the reading. And so um, I hope that you can attend each week. And it's really important that you do in order to, um, do well in this unit, otherwise you will miss out on some important content. So by the end of the semester, you should be able to demonstrate an understanding of what is culture and is a complex uh, concept, as I mentioned. So we'll talk about that today. You should also think about um, or be able to identify what influences culture. So in terms of that, 
We are shaped by our culture or the various cultures we come across. And we also uh, in turn shape culture as well. So it is a transactional kind of relationship that we have. Um, I'm also gonna talk about uh, today a little bit about who we are and the relationship between us, our identities and um, how they are situated in cultures. And so um, we're going to think about ourselves. I'm going to ask you to uh, bring to class this week or in week one an object or wear something that represents your culture. So think about that. Um, we're also going to be thinking about different perspectives on culture. So it's important to think about both sides or multiple theories or theoretical discussions on culture or, or whatever topic it might be so that you can be prepared for your essay um, that's due at the end of the semester and we'll talk more about that later on. So um, you're going to be working as group in groups as well, reflecting on that group experience and you're also going to be learning new tools for research and um, communicating those ideas in an online capacity. Um, so let's think about the assessments. The first task is a homework question during week three. Easy peasy, don't stress. We'll talk about it in the tutorial in week one, but it's a really a great chance for you to get feedback from me and for me to also see what level you're at and provide you with as much direction as I can to set you on the right path for the, final, uh, the remaining assessments. Um, so we also have a seminar presentation where you pick a topic and I can't wait to sit, sit back and relax and let you uh, teach me something about that topic and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Um, we're gonna have a group wiki project, an individual reflection and a final essay. So all of that, um, every task is mandatory, mandatory for this unit um, and we will go through those in detail. Uh, so. What is culture? There are many ways in which we can understand culture um, and we can think about it first and foremost in terms of pop culture. So you might think about films, um, kind of new ways, fashion, trends, whatever it might be, but popular culture is all around us and so therefore it is always changing. And so what I want you to take away from this lecture is that culture is really fluid. It does not stay the same. It is always in a state of flux and change. And um, we're going to look at some of those time periods next week when we think about modernity. Um, but for now, we're going to focus on uh, some of these different ways we can understand what this is. So high culture as well. You might have heard about high and low culture, what's considered to be, you know, um, popular with uh, in terms of class uh, stratifications and uh, opera or ballet considered to be high culture or paintings and art, uh, you know, going to see artwork and stuff like that. And low culture might be, you know, um, going to the cinemas or, you know, not having, I guess, taste in a sense. I'm going to talk about this idea of taste and cultural capital and how we accrue that through our experiences uh, in the world throughout our lives. Foreign culture, ethnic culture, how we celebrate who we are through how we dress, the language we use, how we speak, um, what, what we do, our behaviours and how we react to various people. There's also um, the topic of youth culture um, and how youth is a new category. Um, it really wasn't around, uh, the word teenager wasn't really uh, kind of invented until the mid, uh, I guess, around the 1950s. I'm not sure exactly of the date, but it was in the magazine and it was kind of a new word that came out that was created by uh, the media. And so we're going to think about how youth culture is really a new kind of way of thinking about mankind and people and how we uh, often separate and stereotype people based on their age, sex, gender, religion, and whatever else it might be. So in the tutorial this week, we're going to think about other ways we can uh, discuss culture. So I want you to put your thinking caps on um, and see what you can come up with as other ideas in terms of that. So um, culture is really a way of life. And I really love this quote by Jari and Jari, which says that culture may be taken as constituting the way of life of an entire society. And this will include codes of manners, dress, 
language, rituals, norms of behaviour and systems of belief. Now, I've put an image here at the bottom of um, Anne Frank and I remember being uh, at school and reading her diary and I really, um, I really loved this book and it was quite, I wanted to put this quote up here by her um, and Anne Frank, as we know, was a, um, died uh, in World War II, uh, was Jewish and was um, imprisoned by the Nazis. And she hid for a number of years and wrote that diary. And this was a quote from that. And it said that we all live with the objective of being happy. Our lives are all different and yet the same. So hopefully that's what we're going to uh, deduce from this unit that we are really all the same in many ways but we are also very different and that's the exciting thing that we're going to explore. So why should we study culture? What's the point in doing all of this? So it helps us to better understand why people think and act the way they do. So what influences those behaviours? What influences those changes? And so we're going to think about this next week in terms of the five major um, periods of modernity uh, and the forces that led to the emergence of uh, contemporary society and uh, the idea of different cultures and stuff like that. Um, so it allows us to also better understand who we are and our place in the world. So um, how we are situated, how we experience ourselves positively or negatively um, and how different groups of people actually experience experience their lives and um, uh, how it's relative, as I said. So we're also going to shed light on how people can be negatively impacted by dominant cultures. So we're going to think about this word hegemony um, and how hegemony is considered to be the dominant uh, culture in a particular society and it presents itself as being authentic or as being um, kind of universally accepted when in fact it's not. Um, but that dominant culture and hegemonic culture positions pe certain people as being insiders and others as being outsiders. And those outsiders often experience marginalisation. It might be discrimination, vilification, or whatever it might be. So by shedding light on these things, we can say, hey, what the hell is that? And perhaps we can also, therefore, I don't know, influence change. Um, it's obviously a hope or an ideology, but if no one studies something, if power goes unchecked, it can often be abused. So um, let's think about... Uh, key points for this week. So there are many types of cultures and subcultures within the world and we're going to be focusing on an Australian context uh, in class and maybe what cultures uh, you exist in. And we, um, we are not kind of one person that goes through the world existing as uh, the same, you know, the same person for 80 years. Uh, we change. And so, as I said, culture is very fluid um, and we have multiple identities and take on multiple selves. And that relates really to Goff, Irving Goffman's theory of, um, uh, you know, self-presentation and interactions in everyday life and how we put these masks on and how we change ourselves depending on the environments that we're in, often to inform the impressions that other people, in, inform or guide the impressions that other people may form of us. So uh, Irving Goffman believes that we are not, you know, just one one person, as I said, but that we uh, are always taking on many different roles simultaneously. So we are all of those things. So we're going to think about your subcultures, cultures, whatever it might be, but we're also going to think about how they influence uh, society, as I said, and their visibility. And so dominant cultures, according to Giles and Middleton 2001, uh, suggest that they have a heavy influence on language, values, beliefs, and norms. And I want you to know what those four things are. So language or discourse, which is probably a word that you've uh, come across in your college travels so far, but discourse is really what means the function of language uh, and how it uh, functions to create meaning. And so the way in which we talk about people and the way in which we talk about particular cultures, therefore, shapes people's opinions 
and beliefs and uh, perceptions of those cultures, whether positive or negative. Values, the importance that people put on things or uh, what is kind of considered to be, uh, you know, precious or what's not considered to be precious. Um, beliefs and norms. So norms are often things that we do or follow subconsciously. And we're going to think about how people or some people go against those norms and counteract or resist those. So subcultures can be considered smaller groups which have their own identities and can be defined, defined by observable, distinct norms, values, beliefs and symbols. And they are often uh, tolerated by the dominant culture or dominant cultures in general. So minority cultures are often singled out, as I said, and they lead to discrimination and inequality. Uh, so you might have also come across uh, Michel Foucault, I'm just going to make myself a little bit bigger for a second because I'm squinting. But uh, you might have come across the French philosopher uh, Michel Foucault in your studies as well, and he really talks about this idea of power. Um, and he believes you might have, uh, you know, come across the idea about the panopticon and how we live in a surveillance society that we're always being perhaps watched. Um, and therefore we discipline ourselves and our behaviour, and that's kind of relates to this idea of often it manifests in our bodies and we discipline our bodies the way we look, uh, kind of what's considered to be uh, beautiful uh, and that is relative as well depending on cult different cultures. Um, but we discipline ourselves because of these power, um, these forces of power. So pow power according to Foucault exists everywhere and therefore nowhere specifically. So what that means is that it's actually quite elusive. It is really kind of beneath the surface. And so hopefully in this unit, we can really draw that out and think about how, what, what power structures actually influence dominant culture, but also create the perfect recipe for resistance and counterculture. So counterculture um, is, sorry, I'll just make myself smaller so we can see that if that a bit better. So it's similar to subcultures, but they are smaller groups and they have their own identity. But they, often their purpose is to resist, defy or challenge the dominant culture. So they might be bikey gangs. Uh, I've got a picture here for you about hippies and the hippie movement about, you know, um, free love. And uh, I've got a picture here of the Vietnam War and protests against that movement. Um, at the time and, uh, you know, involvement uh, in that conflict. Um, and also perhaps our first image here about body modification. So people might get tattoos, scarification and change their appearance that don't fit in with what, um, you know, society considers to be normal. Um, and I myself have obviously as I mentioned in my intro, have undergone, you know, some changes in terms of my presentation. I'm going to be reflecting on how that has positioned me um, in a new way in our culture. Um, so sometimes we can simultaneously conform to but also resist uh, cultural norms. So in our first tutorial, what I want you to do, check out, before the tutorial, check out the view site uh, and also visit the library home page. So um, a lot of students have trouble really finding um, appropriate academic sources and you need to know how to do that for your essay. So I want you to start thinking about your culture, choose something that interests you uh, and type it into the library search bar. And then I want you to put after that the word culture. So for example, gaming culture, um, and then click on the uh, little tab where you can limit it to journal articles only. I want you to pick one that perhaps is interesting to you and give it a read um, and write out the full reference uh, for your chosen source in the blog I'm going to start in the discussion board so that we can see what source you've picked. Um, and I want you to think about um, coming to class and discussing that source. So did you learn something new about um, what you picked uh, and the article that you picked? And I want you to think about writing down maybe just two or three interesting points that you read um, and why they were interesting to you. And also, as I said in my introductory video, to bring an object 
or to wear something that reflects your culture or a subculture that you belong to. So be have fun with it. Don't think too hard. Um, and I can't wait to see you guys and to meet you uh, live. Um, so let's just wind up now and think about um, how cultures work as well. So just four key points I want you to write down. That there are often cultural universals. So what that means is, um, you know, that culture is thought about often in ways that uh, lump people together that's considered universal for, say, that all, uh, you know, Lebanese people are the same, all Greek people are the same, or all uh, gay people are the same. But as we know, that is not true. Um, but what society does is stereotype people and lump people into categories. And so we're going to be unpacking some of those. Think about how cultures emerge. And I'm going to talk next week about modernity, as I said, and the forces that led to those, uh, led to changes, how culture reproduces itself. And it reproduces itself, as I mentioned before, through language, the way we talk about people and how culture also transforms over time. Um, so, Conformity can be defined as actions or behaviours that correspond with socially accepted standards, conventions, rules or laws. And so a great example of this uh, that I want you to check out on YouTube is the elevator conformity experiment. And this was, a, a, just check it out and we'll talk about it in week one. I want to see what you think about it. So it's a really interesting experiment about how people and power operates to make us conform or make us feel that we need to conform. Non-conformity can be defined as actions or behaviours that resist socially accepted standards, conventions, rules or laws. So I've put a little quote here by um, uh, Marilyn Monroe. Let me just move my thing because it's in the way. And Marilyn Monroe uh, said that imperfection is beauty, madness is genius, and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than to be absolutely boring. And that is really, I think, a great quote and really something that sums up this idea of non-conformity. Um, and so, you know, the risks that a lot of people take in order to challenge or resist dominant culture. So two key things that we're going to talk about in our Zoom tutorial are uh, conceptual terms and you need to be able to use these conceptual terms in your assignments. The first one is ethnocentrism. Now ethnocentrism is about analysing culture often subconsciously from perspectives of your own beliefs, values, norms and behaviours. So often we think about our own cultures as being the best or you know uh, kind of the right culture. And so what we need to do is really break that down. And this term emerges, emerged from European colonialism and how Europeans consider themselves, particularly British society, as being the centre or the pinnacle of uh, our world. And so this is a little uh, meme here that I've got that says, mmm, perfect, really no cuisine is as good as ours. And that is a classic example of ethnocentrism. Um, so... I've put up a little reading, it's a page long, that I want you to have a look at, that talks about this idea of cultural relativism. And what cultural rel relativism is about is really about breaking down uh, our ethnocentric views that we might have, and sometimes we don't even know that we have them. Um, so I want you to take a look at the reading online by H Heslin Pasami and uh, for 2014, and think about what is cultural rel relativism and come to class and tell me uh, in your own words what that is. So just write a little short uh, sentence or two uh, or a paragraph um, explaining what that term means and we can unpack that further. So final thoughts, uh, a quote by Albert Einstein here and it says, the one who follows the crowd will usually get no further than the crowd. The one who walks alone is likely to find himself in places no one has ever been. So I will leave you with that thought. Um, and our key question for this week is why is it important to study culture? And I've told you in my words what that is, but I want you to think about adding some of your own thoughts to this and 
bring those ideas to class and I can't wait uh, to see what you uh, come up with. But you don't need to do that until after our Zoom tutorial and bring them to class in week two. So each week we'll have a revision uh, of the previous topic so that we, you know, can just make sure that we've covered it, that we are uh, down with all the concepts. And so this will help us to uh, recapture some of the key points that we've come up with today. So I hope you have enjoyed this lecture pod. Um, and I hope that you've gained something new out of this. And I'm really excited to see you, as I said. And if there are any problems, please email me at e.v dot smith at westernsydney.edu.au. I'm available all the time um, to answer your questions, whether it be about the assessments, the unit, um, you know, what we're doing, or just even general discussion. I'm always there. So um, do feel free to email me if you'd like. So see you on Monday, the 19th of June for our first Zoom session. Um, and buckle up because you're in for a ride. Catch ya.